very simple to tie. Now what it was, I had a few pairs of mallard wings and uh, I decided to dye this one yellow. Now you, this is a natural, it's naturally grey. Now when you dye it yellow you get a really nice olive, which I, I mean it's just a great colour. So if you're dying, ever dying something that's it's got a natural grey, and you dye it yellow, you've got a nice, lot, nice olive. And this fly is really simple. The thread I'm using is a uni thread in yellow. And the hook, this is just a B170 size 14. Now I've put some wax onto the thread, and I start the dye, and then just run the thread up, touch and turns until we reach the point of the hook. Now this is your waist piece, this is going to be your rib. Now all I'm going to do is use a permanent marker. Just run it onto the thread. Now, take your thread, again, touch and turns back up, and stop it about a mil from, from the eye. Now I tell you, the conditions that I was fishing were really strong wind blowing upstream and for what fly was, was coming off and it was olives they were getting blown to the sides so we're really not in the, the main runs or the channels where you'd expect like the, the flies to drift down and the fish taking them so the, what I'd done you just I knew kind of round about where the fish were going to be and I tied this so on just below a dry I piggybacked it basically tied an island to the bend of a dry fly two fruit from that dry fly I tied this fly and all I did was cover, casting upstream, covering areas where I thought fish may be lying and in a short time I had half a dozen fish, nice fish as well so it's, I would say definitely it's going to find a place in my box from now on then with the base piece of thread you want to rib quite close, much like a quill, quill effect Just take it up, now you're looking I don't really count them, but you're talking a good seven or so turns all the way up, across your thread, a couple of turns to hold, and take away the waste, and just tidy up, and then bring your thread back up, and take one of the small covert feathers, now don't be shy with the feather itself, I mean, it, I found it, it wasn't a too light. Some of the flies you tie, the wet flies, you can tie them basically a, a ton, and that's plenty. But you could get away with a couple of tons with this fly. So what I'm going to do is take away the fluff at the bottom. Then I'm looking at the basically the front of the hackle just now. Now the leading edge of the stem is going to. I'm going to remove the fine fibers or these fibers from that side. Now the reason I like doing that. More than anything is that, especially these feathers on, on the mallard, that when you do a turn and the, the next one, next one up, it lifts the fibres, makes them sit really up, and that's what you're wanting. And then it helps to form that lovely teardrop shape when it's in the water. And when you use a fine pair of hackle pliers to grab the tip, and then draw these out, just draw the fibres out, and then come in. Now I'm going to trim, trim away these at the side, don't want them. And catch this fine point on the side. Now I've got plenty of wax on the thread, take it up towards the eye. And this is the reason why I like the fine and the light pair of hackle pliers. So when you're using these hackles you need to be Really, you don't want too heavy. heavy. The hackle pliers are really heavy. These are ideal for winding small hackles. Now, when you wind in the hackle up, you do one turn in front of the other. Just work your way up until you get enough hackle. And that's plenty. Just come in, put a 90 degree bend into the stem. Two or three turns to make sure it's not going to pull out, trim away the waste. Take that fair light fibre away. It doesn't look, look too good just now, but I'll tidy up first, just form a nice head. 
and then what finish? One, two, three. Take away the excess wax, which you will get when you tighten up your whip finish and or your knot. Trim your thread away. I'm just going to brush these fibers out so you can see what they're like. And there we are. And that's basically all it is. Just a nice wee fine soft tackle spider wet fly. And it just looks apart. See when it's in the water it's spot on. Now it is a it's a bright coloured fly as I would call it. Obviously the conditions suited the colour really well. Bright sunshine and the wind blowing upstream just that the when you've got a like a coloured fly, that's when they certainly show up. Now in a, a grey day, obviously you want a grey fly, but certainly this one, uh, what for me, what to treat. If you want, you can be quite a varnish all the way around. And the job's finished. And there we are. And that's just... Just a wee olive spider wet fly. Uh, certainly worth a go. I certainly have a few in my box now. I've got a good half a dozen now. There we are. And they're starting to pile up. So I never forget them because I only had a couple and they got a bit tatty. And anyway, there you go. And that should be olive spider.